Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome to Bleacher Bloggers for Tuesday, August 14th. Brent, yes. Dave, yes. lots to talk about today, including golf, baseball, and our preseason tour continues with a look at the AFC South. Uh, but first, Dave, I just want to get into this. The people have spoken. As you know, the Duke hat is gone, okay? We replaced it with a Twins hat, a Cowboys hat, and for that Western Michigan University fan out there, <laughs> I don't think they make hats, so yeah. you're out of luck. But thousands of people uh, voted, and uh, you guys crashed our site. It was amazing. Actually, three of you voted. That's okay, well, Dave. thank you. Keep going. All right, let's talk golf. He's the greatest thing to happen to the world since fire and sliced bread. He's Tiger Woods, and he won the PGA Championship this past weekend. It's time for our celebrity blog. We're sick of all the analysts talking about Tiger Woods, so we got someone from the PGA Tour to actually talk about how great Tiger Woods is. It's from ErnieElz.com, and Ernie writes, I knew I'd have to play the round of my life on Sunday to stand a chance. No duh. We know what Tiger is like. He's not going to reverse himself back to, towards the rest of the pack. We just have to go chasing after him. Why are Tiger and Roger Federer so great? Because they are automatic in the clutch. These right. guys know right. that if you know it's on the line, they have no chance against but Tiger. It's, right. I mean, that's the thing. He's in their heads. I mean, yeah. he is full in their heads. I mean, guys like Sabatini and Woody Austin at his press conference, they have to literally talk themselves into getting up in the morning and playing on Saturday and Sunday. Right. That's it's how like, bad it is It's like the positive affirmation mirror. Like, <laughs> yeah, I had a I'm chance. good enough. No, I'm don't. smart enough. No, you're not. No, Gosh you're not. darn it, people like uh, Let's go to baseball. Great story happening in yep. St. Louis. Rick Ankeel, a couple years ago, this guy was so wild, he was hitting everything except the bull when he was pitching. Now he's batting, and uh, he's again trying to hit the bull out in right field. This guy's clubbing home runs like nobody's business. Great story and a great blog. Our blog of the day, in fact, it is VivaAlbertos.com, posted by Elboros. But actually, he's a little bit uh, conflicted about how to feel over the Ankiel Homer binge. To paraphrase, he's basically saying that he gets it, he appreciates the story, but he's not sure that uh, he's going to share in the RA experience. Wow, I don't know how you can't share in the RA experience with all the bad stories going on in baseball. I just don't know how you can't get behind this one. I mean, you talk about guys like Knobloch, Sachs, Sasser with the Mets, couldn't even get the ball back back to the pitcher. Those guys lost their careers. So this guy goes down to the minors, retools his game, comes up, you know, and he's just hoping for a spot, and he hits three homers in his first two games. Yeah. Unbelievable. Tony La Russa was almost crying. I mean, yeah. it's a great story. Yeah. Between him and Josh Hamilton on the Reds, who's come back from substance abuse problems, I mean, there are some good stories, thankfully, yeah. in baseball this year. And that is a great blog, yeah. and you guys should go to Viva Albertos and check it out because uh, the writer really writes some good stuff. Yeah, he's a really beautiful writer, an excellent writer. It's really good. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be looking at the AFC South, and we'll be chatting with the host of Big Cat Country, a Jaguars blog, and the host of Music City Miracles, a Titans blog. So don't go anywhere. Football! 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 When I decided to drown myself in a bathtub of bleach, that didn't kill me though. I just ended up with white hair on my arms and legs, in addition to the hair on my head and the psoriasis. <laughs> We want to know what you guys think about your favorite team. We're talking AFC South as our preseason preview rolls on. We're going to the home of the defending Super Bowl champs. We're going to StampedeBlue.com. This is posted by Big Blue Shoe, who writes, Jim Sorgi and Josh Bett stink. I mean, they really, really stink. Receivers like Gonzo and Roy Hall were open all night, and Sorgi especially had trouble getting them the ball. Not good. Not good. Not good if Peyton Manning gets hurt, no. which uh, it could be a problem considering that their left tackle, Tarek Glenn, retired. Right. So, um, Peyton, drop back and get rid of the ball as soon as you possibly can all year long. But they have a lot of questions. I mean, seven guys are gone from that starting lineup last year. Harper and David are right. gone. And big cornerbacks in their backfield. I mean, this is this could be interesting. Also, Anthony McFarlane, their star defensive lineman, is out for probably the year. So, they're going to have to fill that wide body, too. So. Wow. But it could be worse. They could be the Texans. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the Texans, well, their fans are already upset. So, after the <laughs> first preseason, the performance. Ron McMahon is bombed over at TexansRock.com. Here's what he writes. If this would have been a regular season game, this would have been a pull-your-hair-out type of game. But lucky for us, it's only preseason, so who cares? Matt Schaub looked okay, but he missed a wide-open receiver for an easy six points. Well, they retooled their offense, and if you can consider retooling your <laughs> offense with a backup quarterback and a really ancient running back uh, in Amon Green, I just don't know what to say. I, you know, I, They sort of remind me of the Texas Rangers, which I've talked about before. Just bad front office. You just keep making decisions that I just don't know they're that good. I see our viewership going nowhere in the uh, state of Texas, <laughs> especially around the Houston region, I think. <laughs> oh, well. Sorry, guys. All right, it's time to talk Jacksonville Jaguars football mm -hmm. with Chris Harris right now at BigCatCountry.com. That's, that's, that's hard to say, BigCatCountry.com. You got it. You got it. Hey, Chris. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. So, uh, Chris, the Jags were a little inconsistent last year, so uh, you think they're going to continue that trend or what? 
as long as we stay healthy and avoid all the all the all the health issues and injuries of last year, I think you're going to see that that inconsistency rap was misplaced. Wow, nice. Now, defensively, you know, they were a top five defense last year. You expect more of the same this season? I hate to bring up the injury things again, but we lost three big time defensive players to injury for most of the year. They're back. Reggie Hayward's Achilles tendon looking excellent. Um, I could, I would stand by saying Jacksonville's going to have the number one defense this year, no matter what. I think they're going to be the best. That's impressive. That's impressive. So, uh, what about on the offensive side of the ball? How about these wide receivers? I'll tell you what, uh, put, it, put it in stone, Reggie Williams is not going to make the team. Reggie Williams is done. He disappeared in the preseason game. Matt Jones is stepping up. He's still a little inconsistent. But Mike Walker, John Broussard, Dennis Northcutt, they're really selling out nicely and being the consistent receiver that we lost when we lost Jimmy Smith. So I think uh, we're going to lose Reggie Williams and some young talent's going to step up and I think it'll all work out. Well, wow. that's, that's a bit of wow. a bombshell with yeah. Reggie Williams. Yeah. Chris, thank you so much, man. We really enjoyed it and uh, we'll definitely talk to you throughout the season. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good one. All right, thanks, man. You can check him out at BigCatCountry.com. It's a good site. He writes yep. well. It's a good site. Refusing to talk about Pac-Man Jones right now, we're talking Titans football with Jimmy Morris at MusicCityMiracles.com. Jimmy, how you doing today? Doing good. How are y'all? Good. good. So, uh, so we're talking Vince Young in the wide receiver position. We know they upgraded with Eric Moulds and some draft picks. Um, is that going to be enough for the offense this year? I think it will be. The two guys they lost, Drew Bennett and Bobby Wade, a lot of people made a, a lot of stink about that. But Eric Moles can do just as much as Drew Bennett did in the offense last year. Brandon Jones is a guy coming into his third year, torn ACL uh, in his rookie year, was having a great year. So I think he'll really step it up. I think the receivers will be just fine. All right, well, when Vince isn't throwing the ball or running it himself, he's going to be handing off, presumably to Lendell White. What do you think? Is Lendell going to win the job? I think in the end, Lindell will win the job. Uh, you know, he came, there was a lot of reports. He came in a camp overweight. Um, he apparently came in around 260. That was, I guess, the beginning of the OTAs. Uh, he's got his weight down, and he's he's running hard. So I, I think in the end, it'll be him. But you know, they drafted Chris Henry, and he showed a good burst Saturday night. So it, it's, it's going to come down to the wire. Mm. So uh, nobody's really talking about Jeff Fisher. He's been there forever. It yeah. feels like 50 well, years. I think. Right? <laughs> What's the status of his job over there? Well, he was he was on the hot seat big time. You know, they had a, a five-win season, a four-win season, and then coming into last year, it was, you know, a lot of people were talking about Bud Adams getting ready to, you know, get him out. But after the big, you know, the big surge they had last year to playoff, playoff race, I, I think he's pretty good for now. But interesting point, he is in his last, the last year of his contract. So you see, you, so you see him getting a deal? Uh, everybody's saying that, you know, it's a done deal. We're just waiting, waiting, waiting. But, I mean, it's it's starting to get a little nerve-wracking because it's been going on, going on, going on. I still haven't signed it. So we'll see. Uh, well, uh, I think the Titans are definitely going to be a fun team to watch this yeah. year oh, with their yeah, offense, without, without as long question. as Vince Young doesn't suffer the Madden curse. Right. So, uh, Jimmy, we will definitely be talking to you throughout the year. Thanks so much for joining us, man. Oh, uh, yeah, no problem. All right, cool. So you can catch Jimmy Morris at MusicCityMiracles.com all season long talking Titans. Get off the bench. All right, so check this out. Brent and I are going to do a show in a few weeks about the worst sports movies of all time, and we need your help. We need you guys to tell us what sports movie you think stinks. Oh, yeah, my agent, by the way, uh, wants me to do the re-remake of The Longest Yard. What do you think? Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Ha -ha. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, you guys can go to YouTube at Bleacher Bloggers. Uh, you can also post on BleacherBloggers.com or link us up to your own site to let us know what is the worst sports movie ever. Think about that, dude. Burt Reynolds, Adam Sandler, me. We'll see you guys Friday. Don't ever talk about that again. Here's my forward pass. That's a pass? That's a forward. I'm sitting down. Th that's notice, really how you throw the ball? Notice the, like that? Notice the technique. Yeah. See, Your my team hands, would lose 57-0. My, my hands cupping the ball. Your hands cupping balls? That's <laughs> time for me to leave.